Nitrous Commerce presents the Amazon Mapping Wizard. Once you've completed this wizard, all of your items, which match items in the Amazon Global Catalog, will be for sale on Amazon. To begin the process, press Start. Step 2 of 7. Select what to sell on Amazon. In order to indicate which of your items you'd like to sell on Amazon, you must first synchronize that true or false data from your POS to the Amazon interface. In order for that data to make it to Amazon, you must first create an attribute in PAM, and then map that PAM field to a remote field using Sync, and then select that remote field in the mapping wizard using the Include in Amazon dropdown. Please note, for a more complete demonstration of creating PAM attributes and field mapping in Sync, please see this tutorial. First, create a Boolean attribute in PAM named AMZ Cell, or AMZ Online, for example. By marking this attribute true, you will be indicating to Amazon that this item is for sale on your storefront. Next, open NSC Sync, or NSC Server Sync, for RMS HQ users. Expand the Marketplace table and inspect the remote fields for availability. Then map your newly created PAM attribute to an available remote field. Once you've selected the field which determines what items will be sold in Amazon, select Save Include in Amazon. Step 3 of 7, Product Identification. This step will help you attain the minimum level of product details required. By default, your Amazon product SKU is mapped to your POS item lookup code or item number. This mapping is essential to the integration so that your inbound orders items are identified by your POS. Basically, your item numbers will remain assigned to your items as they live on Amazon. As items are purchased on your Amazon storefront and web orders are created and then downloaded to your POS, your POS will understand what items are being purchased because they still have the same SKU. We highly recommend leaving this mapping unchanged. In addition to the product SKU, Amazon requires a standard product identifier, or barcode, to match your items with their existing catalog of items. If a product number is already in their catalog, then you simply must identify your product numbers to Amazon by mapping that data from your database to theirs. Your options include UPCs, EANs, and ASINs. If the standard product barcodes already exist in your POS database, simply select the type of numbers they are and in what remote field they can be found. If the standard product identifiers don't already exist, you must decide which type of numbers you'll employ, UPCs, EANs, or ASINs. Where to store that data locally, either in an unused native POS field or a new field created through PAM, and to what remote field they will be mapped. For example, if your POS subdescription 3 attribute is unused, you might consider storing these numbers there. But in the case where native attributes aren't available, you may simply create a new attribute in PAM and map it in sync. Once again, for a complete demonstration of creating PAM attributes and field mapping in sync, please see this tutorial. Once you've selected your standard product type and standard product ID remote field, select Save Product Identification. Step 4 of 7, Product Description. This step deals with the mapping of three attributes, product title or name, product description or extended description, and product weight. Using the drop-down menus, again select from where in your database each of these is located. If you wish to ship by weight, select the box and then select the location of your weights and their units of measure. Then, save product description. Step 5 of 7, Price of your products. Setting the selling price on Amazon is as easy as selecting which POS price field you want to pull from. By default, we look to the standard POS price. However, you may choose to employ a price level, web price from PAM, or a custom price attribute you've created. Advanced users might consider creating a case statement. Any of these options are fine and may be changed later. Your currency must match the marketplace you're doing business in. For example, Amazon.com deals only in US dollars, whereas .co.uk deals exclusively in pounds sterling, and so on. Once complete, select Save Price Mapping. 
Step 6 of 7, Stock Level. The purpose of your integrated storefront is to provide accurate stock data so that you can sell exactly how many items you have in stock. For this reason, the default mapping to stock is the stock level in your POS database. However, in some cases, you may choose to manipulate the actual stock level through an expression in the stock level mapping to always show one less than you actually have. This is insurance against overselling because stock levels are sometimes inaccurate and web orders download in 15 minute intervals. Save your stock levels. Step 7 of 7, image mapping. You have the ability to synchronize multiple images. However, we're most concerned with providing Amazon with at least one main image. The default, product image 1, should meet your needs unless you have customizations from an earlier time. Save image location. Congratulations! You've just completed the mapping wizard. By selecting Return to Amazon Data Mapping page, you'll be sent to the area where all mappings are stored. The wizard you just completed was used to populate the basic mappings of this interface. From this point, if you require a customization or an exception to your default mapping, based on another parameter such as department or category, you may do so here. Should you ever need to reset or rerun the basic mapping wizard, you may find it under Tools at the bottom of the page. This concludes the Amazon Mapping Wizard tutorial. For more information, see the NitroCell forum or contact support through the ticket system. Thank you for watching. NitroCell e-commerce, helping you succeed online.